Howdy, uh, Mojave D here. I'm doing well. I hope you are doing well. Uh, we're about to do something that I never dreamed uh, I would be doing, and um, I'm going to answer some questions. Um, so um, um, uh, my son thought it would be a good idea to do a Q&A, &A. and um, okay, let's do it. Um, he sent me um, a bunch a, he, a, 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 of your questions. Uh, he, he emailed them to me. Um, how many are there? Oh my goodness. Um, I take a look here. 30, 40, we're in the 50s, 60s. Adam, what did you do to me? 68, uh, there are 68 questions here um, from you guys. And uh, that's worth that's worth it. That's worth uh, answering your questions if you have them, um, because it's it's all about you anyway. So uh, I'm just going. Oh, here's one. I'm just. Uh, I was going to start at the top. I just scroll down the bottom. Come. Um, uh, Fifty-four. He. Uh, my son took these off of the. Um, I don't know what episode he, he put that up there uh, where you guys could ask questions if you wanted to, uh, what video that was, but he took them in order. So I, so how many did I say there was? 68. So these are the first 68 uh, questions. And, uh, oh man. Um, so Excuse me, I'm just looking through them here. Uh <laughs> oh, there's some great questions here. Uh, some of them might get too personal. Um, um, well, oh, here's one. <laughs> uh, well, I'll start at the top. I'll start at the top, but I'm just I'm just looking at these uh, and and seeing what they what they are. Uh, um, uh, Nail boys now N A O B O Y Z Nail boys uh, uh, eight. 259 asked, have you ever shot a gun? Thousands of times. Thousands of times. See, there we go. We're off to an easy start. Um, okay, let me get up to the top. We'll go to the first question and, uh, and, and uh, see, see how far we get through here. Uh, two, Sidious two, uh, so uh, Roman numerals, I guess. Uh, anyway, Sidious two asked, 30 years ago, did you ever think you would play an almost real-life-looking game with dedicated fans? Oh, my goodness. And watching you play it from all around the world through the Internet. No. No. Uh, how does that feel? Uh, heartwarming and humbling. Um, um, uh, 30 years ago, I was 41. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't even, I know I didn't watch YouTube. I don't, you know, I don't even know if there was a YouTube. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Sidious. Uh, Jinx dash Cun C U N uh, and Durky O One. Oh, this is a whole bunch of people who asked the same question. Uh, Durky O One, Botello Piedra <laughs> Piedra Lionel Cristo. I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. Six three six six, Waluigi, <laughs> W A L U I G I, five zero three five, Brendan Love, and S Barker nine three eight five, ask, do you have any plans on playing the first Red Dead Redemption? Is there a first Red Dead Redemption? <laughs> no, I don't have any plans. Does not mean I won't. Uh, but no, I don't have any plan. I didn't know there was a Red Dead. So it would be um, what happened before this. Um, I'll take a look. Uh, but no, I don't have any plans on it. Giacomo713, wants you to fix your HUD settings so that you can see the proxies here. <laughs> we can go over this later. I don't even know what a HUD setting is, uh, Giacomo. Um, but that sounds great, and it sounds like something that uh, one of my sons will have to deal with. 
Um, I don't know what a HUD setting is, but if it makes it easier for me to see the prompts, I'm in. All right, Durkee, oh one. Uh, we had Durkee up here on uh, another question. Well, Durkee, oh one. John Oreo three eight six one, and P P Man three seven six six. Ask, how do you think R D R two will end? I. Oh, what a um. How do I think it will end? Uh, first of all. I don't know that it does, um, you know, well, it does. When my son got me the game, he knows I like games that have a definite ending. Um, it's so massive. There's so many um, um, divergent routes, you know, and they all kind of intertwine. Uh, so many different ways that a person could play this game. I'll tell you what. Uh, it's it would be a fun hunting game. I mean, you could just hunt uh, if you wanted to and ignore the storyline and just and just be like a, a survivalist, you know, just out there in the woods uh, like Jeremiah Johnson. And if you ever saw that movie, um, you know, uh, trying to survive, trying to live and living off the land and hunting. And you know, um, there's so many ways. I mean, you could play. Um, I don't even know all the different ways that you could play it, but okay, let's get to the question, which is how do I think it will end? Uh, okay, off the top of my head, two ways. And I'm sure there's more. If I, I'd have to really give some thought to it. If Arthur stays with the gang, um, um, He would, uh, uh, hmm, I hate to say this, um, he gets killed. Uh, now, I get him killed every day almost, but he gets, he's, he's immortal as long as I'm playing him, right? He, he responds, thank God, because I get him killed every day, because um, I'm such a, yeah, anyway. Um, but I think he would, uh, if he stays with the gang, so he either stays with the gang or he doesn't, is the way I see it. So if he stays with the gang um, uh, and doesn't get out from under Dutch's thumb, um, uh, he has to get killed. Um, and that's the way gang life ends. You know, if you're in a gang, you're a slave. You know, and uh, I don't want it to go that way. I... I, what I think we're doing, because redemption is in the name of the game. Uh, here, let me get my big head out here. Can I, can, um, I've got the screen up. This, can, there it is right there. I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2 is in the game. Uh, redemption is in the game. So um, what I think is we redeem Arthur. Um, there are a couple of redeemable characters in here. I think uh, Charles is redeemable. Uh, I, I could name others, but um, so in order for him to redeem himself, he has to get out from under Dutch's thumb. You know, Dutch has got him under his thumb, um, and um, I really, really um, I can't wait for uh, Arthur to gain his independence. To be, uh, you know, uh, you know, freedom, you know, uh, liberty, get away, get out of that, um, you know, and but it, man, it's a fabulous story um, as it is. I mean, what a great, 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 great theme and story this is. You know, a little boy gets adopted by uh, uh, an outlaw. Uh, and uh, gets raised by the outlaw into the gang and into the outlaw life, and uh, we have to redeem him. So I think, um, or it's a, we don't, you know, it's, it's his journey uh, to redemption. I think, I, I mean, I don't have a lot of information. Uh, you know, I'm, we, we just entered chapter three. So from the information I have, I can see those two paths. Um, uh so I think um, I look forward to getting out from under Dutch's thumb. 
and um, riding off into the sunset like Shane, if you ever saw the movie Shane. Uh, I, that's the best I can do with the information I have. Um, OS8588 asks, how would you rate Red Redemption 2 on a scale of 1 to 10? 11, 12, 13? <laughs> they made, they set the bar. Uh, the guys who made this game are brilliant. They're brilliant. Not only brilliant, they are, um, that's the word I'm looking for, um, 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 talented, uh, extremely talented in everything they do. Uh, the script writing, superb. Um, the guys who do the voice acting, guys and gals who do the voice acting, superb. Every single aspect of this game. Um, uh, oh my gosh, all the, the code writers who do the, uh, the background. I mean, when you've got little leaves falling to the ground, the rivers, the way they do the motion on the rivers, the animal movements, um, um, superb. I think they set the bar. I mean, this is the high bar, man. This is the high water mark uh, for, for, uh, for this genre of video game or any video game. Um, yeah. Um, so OS8588, 10 plus. Uh, AMOL5LY, Javier Montoya3105, and Slip7532 say, what game do you think you'll play after Red Dead Redemption 2? I do not have any idea. I don't know that I will be able to finish this game before I die. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I've given zero thought to that. Um, I tell you what, though, before this, I, I do, oh gosh, I do have um, a series on, on a couple other games that I, I was uh, doing, and I need to, I've ignored those, I need to get back to those games and, uh, and finish up what I started. Um, so thank you, AMOL5LY, Javier Montoya, and Slip. Okay, Dr. Skipper asks... How are you feeling about Red Dead Redemption's two stories so far in terms of progression? And how do you feel about Arthur as a person so far? I love Arthur. Uh, Arthur and I could be friends. I, I could be, I, we could be friends in, in real life. If, if I, yeah, I uh, love Arthur. Um, uh, how do I th feel about the story so far in terms of progression? Um, I think it's uh, a phenom. It's uh, it's it's cutting edge. They it's it's uh, the story. Uh, it's you know it's like if all the other video games are on the main the main road like this, Red Dead Redemption just cut a new path, man. They just went and pioneered a whole new path. Um, just simply superb. Did I answer your question, Doctor Skipper? Um, how do you feel the story? about the story so far in terms of progression. How do you feel about Arthur? I think I did. Okay. Um, Bones Remain asks, will you be streaming live soon? No. Um, um, for two reasons. One, I don't know how. <laughs> uh, two, uh, basically what I'm doing is streaming, um, you know, as opposed to a, uh, a how-to video, you know, a 10-minute how-to video. Or something like that. Um, um, I'm, you know, you guys don't seem to mind, uh, you know, hour long, two hour long, even three hour long videos, which is basically streaming. Um, the other reason, um, who asked that? Uh, Bones Remain uh, is I think it opens the door to spoilers. And um, uh, my sons have um, stood guard over that. Um, and, um, and I do too. Um, I just go directly to my channel. I don't, you know, if I go to YouTube homepage, uh, Red Dead Redemption never used to be on my YouTube, uh, homepage because I never interacted in any way with Red Dead Redemption, uh, with that game. Uh, and so what's on your homepage, you know, the algorithm, YouTube algorithm will put stuff up there that, um, you're interested in. And so there was, but now since I've been playing the game, if I go to YouTube's homepage, 
uh, there's all this Red Dead stuff up there. I mean, it's just my the, my home page. I'm like, ah, you know, all these different uh, Red Dead um, uh, videos. Um, you know, they, they pop up. So I don't. So my sons guard. They stand guard over um, spoilers, and so do I. I just go directly to my channel. I don't. So I don't see anything on the home page. So those are the two reasons I won't live stream. It, it opens the door to possible spoilers accidentally. People people don't mean to. They might just they might say, "Hey man, you know," they might say something that I don't want to know um, because it would ruin it. The whole purpose of the series, you know, when my son uh, bought me the game, he said, "Dad, you need to play this." You know, it has an ending. I know you want games that have endings, um, and. Um, uh, you need to um, you need to record it as uh, playing blind. Well, so spoilers just destroys all of that. Okay, Jose Medina, Medina, 1805. Back when you first learned about video games, <coughs> oh god, <coughs> did you think they would ever be as advanced and sophisticated for storytelling and entertainment as they are now? When I first learned about video games, it was Pong. Google it. Google Pong. Uh, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> no. No. Uh, Pong. Pac-Man. You know, you'd have, they'd have these Pac-Man machines in restaurants and stuff. Pac-Man was so monstrously huge. It was monstrously Pac-Man was everywhere. You know, everywhere you went, you know, you went to a gas station, they had a Pac-Man uh, machine in there, like a, you know, like the old um, jukebox, you know, kind of thing, and, and, and but it was Pac-Man. Pac-Man was everywhere, and uh, Pong before that. Uh, who, who asked that? Jose? Jose Medina? No, no, how could I? How could I possibly imagine anything like this? Okay, um, Durkey01, again. Coda four eight three nine and Batiste nine one 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 Ryan Ziegler nine six five four and Bruno seven seven eight oh six. Others ask other than Arthur, who are your favorite characters so far? I like Sadie. <laughs> um, I like Molly. I like Charles. Um, I like Lenny, uh, although we haven't, he doesn't really get developed much in this. Um, I answer your question. I, 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 um, there you go. Um, Leper Sonage, uh, S O N N A G E, 371. Uh, Maddie 007 and Rick Tav 27 ask when and how did you get interested in video games oh god guys i played the very first video games um in 1984 i bought a big mac uh macintosh it was their big it was their most powerful computer at the time uh, your cell phone is a hundred times more powerful than the Big Mac was back then. And that that thing cost me three thousand dollars. I bought the Big Mac and a whole bunch of um, uh, uh, all the stuff you could buy to go along with a printer and all kinds of um, programs and stuff like that. They were on a disc, and you would slip the disc into the the Big Mac. You can Google Big Mac, um, um, uh, Apple Big Mac, and it had a game on it. Oh no, wait! E even before that. Um, even before that, uh, Atari, at the Atari system, and um, me and my brother-in-law uh, played um, NFL football on that. Now, it's hilarious. Go look up the uh, Atari NFL football game. Uh, the players were stick figures. You know, stick figures like when you're in kindergarten and you draw a person and you draw a line and that's the body. Then you draw two lines off of that. Those are the legs and two lines up here. Those are the arms. That was football. That was the first football game. Uh, and it was played um, uh, on Atari. And um, every Friday night I'd go over to, uh, to CCC. Uh, that was, uh, his real name was Colin uh, Collins. 
and um, but everybody called him CC, and uh, CC and I were tight. Uh, he was, he's no longer with us, and CC, uh, CC was uh, was a very very good friend. And uh, so see, I would go over there every Friday night, uh, and we would play Atari uh, football. I don't know when that was. Uh, that was before 1984. And so that's when it started. What was the question again? When and how did you get interested? Um, that's it. Right there, um, um, Lepers Sonage. Sorry, Dad, 692. What has stuck with you the most throughout Red Dead Redemption 2 adventures so far? Man, uh, there is so, so much. Sorry, Dad. Um, stuck with me the most is... Arthur's struggle. Um, he's trapped. He's in a trap. And you see in his eyes, you hear it in his voice. You, it's in his dialogue, the things he says. Um, it's a mighty, mighty struggle for him. Um, because he is fiercely loyal um, loyal to a fault to um, something wrong uh, for lack of a better way to say it and he doesn't want to be so he's he, you know he's fiercely loyal though and uh, and I th and I think he realizes, that staying fiercely loyal to something wrong is going to lead to his demise. So there's this mighty, mighty struggle there. I, I think that's what sticks with me the most. Um, it's Dax K asks, what is your favorite thing about Arthur as a character so far? Are there any gang mem members you like better than the rest? Um, my favorite thing about Arthur is Arthur. Um, I love his um, um, uh, his courage. Um, I love he, he is he is courageous, uh, and he is intelligent. You know, not necessarily um, well educated, but intelligent. Very very intelligent. He's no idiot. He's nobody's fool. And um, I like that. And what was the other part? Are there any gang members you like better than the rest? Well, <laughs> I like the ladies. Um, um, I'm just uh, women have always been my downfall in real life. Anyway, um, I like. Uh, do I like? Do I like better than the rest? Um, I like Charles. I like Lenny. I like Hosea. I think all of those characters are redeemable. Uh, I'm not sure that all the rest of them are. I, I, I think all the ladies are redeemable as well. Okay. Jeff Berger asks, how do you find peace? <laughs> um, Jeff, it's taken... 60 or 70 years. I think, well, I can only speak for myself, but it might apply to a lot of people. When you're young, um, you don't even seek peace, you know. Uh, you're you're scrambling and fighting, uh, and I don't mean physically, but but uh, for a job, for a career, for um, um, accumulating um, uh, uh, things and money to uh, provide security and um, and um, you know to 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 move up in the world and you're and so you're you know it's you're you're it's there's no peace there's no peace you know there's work 
And then there's, uh, if you've got a family, you know, um, a wife and children, there's, 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 you know, there's, there's all of that, 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 uh, requires a tremendous amount of, um, of effort. Um, everything, uh, requires effort, uh, a lot of effort. And, and I don't know, man, I don't think there's peace when you're young. I don't think, uh, young people, uh, have a clue about peace. Um, just the nature of life. Um, um, peace. How do I find peace? Um, okay, well, honestly, so I did, that doesn't really, what I first did, it, it, it said there doesn't really uh, address the, the question. Um, I, with God. Uh, that's the only place uh, for me. For me. Uh, he knows me really well, and uh, uh, and I know him um, pretty well too, and um, um, I talk to him um, a lot, like I talk to you. Um, you know, I don't I don't uh, go to him and say, you know, God, I, I, give me some more money, or give me this, or give me that. Um, you know, I'd go to him and just talk to him, and uh, um, and in God's word, that's where I find peace. All right. Jim, Jen Rambo, what's your favorite Western cowboy gun from Red Dead Redemption 2? Oh, uh, I like the Colt 45. You know, in, in real life, uh, I just, I do. I like the Colt, um, the Colt 45. Uh, they didn't make it OP in the game, but there you go. Um, um, let's skip down to the bottom. Let's go to the very last question, just in case I don't have time to get all the way down there um the very last question um that was there before my son um um um, um stopped stopped that thread uh, from travis dallas do you think video games like this have the potential to tell a story better than books no or movies yes would you consider this game a form of art absolutely or just an exceptional game. And both. Uh, this game is art. Are you kidding? Um, uh, just from, um, as, as writers, okay, authors. Uh, name, name all the, the great authors through, throughout the, the, the time. And all the great novels and books. Uh, this is right there with them. The writing. Uh, the storytelling. The, the story itself. The theme. Um, it's art. That's art. Um, and then again, you can get into the graphics. The, the that's uh, that's art. It's art, man. And, at, at the highest level, uh, you know, of uh, for AI computer art, uh, definitely art. Um, as far as uh, it having the potential to tell a story better than a book, no, um, no, um, no. Um, read, read books, children, boys and girls, read. Read books. Um, uh, I've read some. I've read all of the classics. I've read them all, man. Um, the Odyssey, the Iliad, um, you know, all of that stuff. Um, you know, um, you know, Tale of Two Cities. I can go on and on. Charles Dickens. Uh, read, read. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll t I, now I'm thinking about it. Lonesome Dove. I read the book, the, the novel. Um, my favorite, probably my favorite book. Um, at least one of them, for sure. Uh, Lonesome Dove came very, very close to the book, to being as good as the book. Very, very close. Um, because um, they followed the book, um, uh, almost word for word. Um, uh, so Lonesome Dove did achieve that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what else? Uh, the Three Musketeers. Now, there's been a lot of Three Musketeer movies, and most of them are crap uh, compared to the book, except one. Um, and it was the one with... Um, um, I got to pause. I got to pause this and look up the actors' names. Uh, Oliver Reed. 
uh, Oliver Reed played Athos, um, and oh, I can't remember the other actors who played uh, Aramis and Porthos and D'Artagnan. Uh, Raquel Welch was in it. Um, they stayed very, very close to the novel, to the book, um, The Three Musketeers, which was one of my favorite books. I read that book when I was young. Um, I read The Three Musketeers three, four times in a row, man. I read it, and I went and read it again, and I read it again. Uh, I absolutely loved The Three Musketeers. Those two came pretty darn close to the book. But uh, to answer your question, Travis, um, no, uh, I don't think any any game or any movie uh, can match a book. Um, I just don't. That's personal opinion. But yeah, definitely an art. It's art, baby. This is art. All right, boys and girls, I'll be right back at you. Uh, smoke them if you got them. I need a break. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I was just out there, and I'm, I was thinking about that that uh, question about peace. Who, uh, who asked that? Um, um way up at the top uh, hold on um, um, do I play any instruments <laughs> um, no I tried I tried to play the guitar I tried to play the trumpet I, I got pretty good on the trumpet um, and you know and I, you know no I, I, I'm not musically inclined I love music uh, and I, I do, I love music, it's a big part of my life, but, and I appreciate it, I have a, um, a, I have a good ear for music, I just don't have um, talent for music, to play an instrument. Who asked that question about peace? Um, let's see if I can find, it's, it was way up at the top, uh, Jeff, Jeff Berger, uh, 3003, um, um, what I was saying is I don't think you find peace when you're young uh, because you're competing. Um, and sometimes you're not competing on a uh, level playing field, are you? Right? And sometimes it's just not a level playing field, man. And, um, and it's tough. And you have competitors. You're competing. Uh, people uh, trying to uh, outdo you. And... Um, I just got a, a text from one of my sons who lives in Florida, and he says, uh, um, <laughs> what did he say? He said, uh, uh, screening my comments has become a full-time job. <laughs> the screening the comment section for spoilers has become a full-time job. Thanks, thanks, son. Uh, he's in Florida. That's the one in Florida. I have one in Hawaii, uh, one in California, and uh, my other son uh, lives uh, here in Nevada, about uh, 30 minutes from me. Anyway, back to peace. And then now, my, now he just threw my brain off there. Um, now I have peace, and life is good. Um, there's that old saying. Um, Die young, you know. Uh, don't don't get old. Um, but that's it, it. Life is good now, and I and I'm at peace. I'm at peace with myself. I don't think I was at peace with the younger me. I know I wasn't. Uh, not at all. Um, um, there's a lot about the younger me I I didn't like. I don't like um, a lot. Uh, but as you get older, and uh, when I talk with God, I, tell you, I said, um, you know, I don't ask him for things. Um, I ask him for wisdom. I ask him for help in situations. I just wanted to go back on that. So let's go back down to the bottom. Because um, I was thinking about it when I was out there. Um, okay, second from the bottom. Mary, morning Mary. Mary, have you ever listened to the song, Mary in the Morning? It is a beautiful, beautiful song. Go listen to Mary in the Morning. Um, okay, Morning Mary asks, what do, you what do you plan to buy with the $2,500 Arthur made from the bank robbery? <laughs> Maybe buy him some new clothes. That's absolutely what I wanted to do, and I, I got sidetracked in the last uh, episode, and I didn't buy him any clothes, but I wanted to buy... Uh, uh, two Schofields, a pump-action shotgun, and I wanted to get him some clothes that weren't all raggedy. 
uh, you know, with rips and tears in them. Uh, so that, that's the answer to that, uh, Mary. Uh, Mary in the morning. She's actually morning Mary. Um, Banana S asks, what did you enjoy doing as a kid? Everything. <laughs> uh, uh, it was a different world. It was a different world. Um, it was a free world. It was a freer world. Uh, um, you know, I fished a lot, uh, and I never had a fishing license. Didn't need one, you know. Oh, gosh. Um, I spent a lot of time. Well, here, uh, think about this, uh, all of you mothers and fathers out there. Would you allow your 8 or 9 or 10-year-old to just go out and free roam on the back of a horse <laughs> without any adult supervision? Would you do that? My mother would take me to the stables. And for 50 cents an hour, uh, you could ride. And then this is from eight years old. Uh, hold on. I kicked something. Uh, hold on. I got I to gotta fix something. My foot just kicked some wires. Hold on. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I didn't disconnect something with my big foot. Um, 50 cents an hour, you could ride. And she would drop me off at the stables with my friend, or his my friend's mother would take us. And... Uh, and the mom, his mom or my mom, would say, see you in an hour. And, um, and you would ride free roam on a horse at 8, 9, 10 years old. No adult supervision, no guide, you know, no wrangler guide leading people out. And, you know, lines, all the horses are in a line, you know, a bunch of rent nags. No, uh, free roam. Just, just go. Just go out and ride. Um you know, uh, bicycle. Oh my gosh, I lived on a bicycle, man. We rode everywhere. We would ride three miles uh, to the swimming pool and swim. And uh, there was a bas you know, indoor basketball court and, you know, play basketball at the gym. And we played baseball all day. We were outside all day, all day, all day. And there were people everywhere. Um, I, man, you could go through the neighborhoods and people were outside. Um, I can drive through neighborhood after neighborhood after neighborhood here and won't see a human being. Now, you'll see people, you know, where they're working, you know, in, 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 in towns, you know, and in the, you know, where people are conducting business. Like, yeah, it's crowded. There's, there's stuff going on. There's, you know, the stores and all the businesses going on and people working. But in the neighborhoods, the neighborhoods are empty. They're like ghost towns. Nobody goes outside anymore. So being outside, uh, lizard hunting. Oh my gosh, I was the king of the king of the desert, man. Uh, I think I have the record for catching the most lizards in one in one uh, outing, uh, solo by yourself. I caught nineteen lizards in one day. Uh, you know, nineteen. Anybody out there catch more than nineteen lizards? You know, we're talking iguanas, whip tails, zebra tails, horny toads. Horn. We called them horny toads. I think they're supposed to be called horned toads. Um, you know, side blotches, uh, you name it. Um, everything that lives in the Mojave Desert, I have caught or killed. Um, you know, a red racer snake. Oh, I got a story about a red racer. Um, my red racer that we caught, I think it was four foot 11. I'll tell it some other time. Uh, red racers, uh, gopher snakes, king snakes, um, encounters with sidewinders and rattlesnakes. Um, uh, uh, but, um, I, when I was really little, I lived in the desert, man. I, I, I mean, I played in the desert, uh, you know, um, and we played on the schoolyards. The schools were all open, uh, on the weekends. Uh, you could go in and, and use the facilities. You could, you could, you could play on the football field, the baseball fields, the basketball courts. And we did that. We played kickball. We played four square. We played, uh, tether ball. We played, um, uh, wall ball we played you name it I mean that's what we did you know anyway uh, so that was Ben S asked that question thank you for that question confusing fool asks do you have a favorite <coughs> do you have a favorite little Debbie treat <laughs> okay confusing fool little De all of them uh, little Debbie um, uh, oh gosh a favorite oh she had those bars, those peanut butter bars, um, right? Wasn't that little Debbie, the peanut butter bars? Yeah, yeah, that would be it. Daniel, PF7MP, 
what's the happiest you've ever been? Oh, guys, man, you're asking some deep questions here. The happiest I've ever been? Or do you mean like a moment? Or are you talking about a period, a, a, a period of time? I, I got to get my hand in the camera. A moment or a period of time? I, I don't, that's a, you know, that requires a lot of thinking. Um, if you're talking about a moment, it would be falling in love. Because uh, you're on cloud nine, right? I mean, everything is wonderful. Everything, you know, that, that those, those first um, days when um, she tells you she loves you and you love her and there's, there's love. Um, you know, that's a moment. Um, I, I think a bird just flew by outside in the courtyard here. Um, I, I think, I, I think, I, I don't know, that'd be the easiest answer, I guess. Um, war game to play, uh, to play, war game to play asks, have you ever heard of the great locomotive chase? I don't know. Um, maybe, and I forgot. I don't think so. My great uncle was one of the Union Raiders that stole a Confederate train. War game two play? You got to tell us more about that. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Okay. Um, Adrian spelled A-E-Y-D-R-I-A-N asks, you mentioned Madden and 2K. Do you watch sports? No. Uh, which is really, really sad because um, in my younger days, I was an athlete and um, sports was a big part of my identity. Um, um, you know, you, you know, um, it was a big part of who I was. Um, you know, uh, football and track, basketball, all of them. Um, but I don't watch it anymore because some some of the big mucky mucks in charge of the NFL and the big mucky mucks in charge of the NBA notice that when somebody scores a touchdown, the crowd goes crazy and the crowd loves it. And so they say, well, let's, let's make it so that happens more often. And they made rule changes that favor the offense to the extreme. And if I watch, I mean, I, I haven't watched uh, sports in 20 years. I haven't watched football or basketball in 20 years. Well, since Kobe retired. Um, or, yeah, so I did, I did watch up, uh, well, I didn't watch towards the end of his career. Um, but there's no defense. Nobody knows how to t tackle. They, they, they don't tackle. They come in like missiles, man. They come in like with headshots, you know. That's because they improved the helmets so much, they turned the, the helmets into a freaking weapon. You know, when I started playing uh, football, our, it was leather helmets, leather. You could, you could, you could, you could put your hand on, on the two ear holes and you could press them together. You, you could make them touch. Leather helmets. Uh, you play with a leather helmet, you don't lead with your head when you tackle because you're going to hurt yourself. You know, now, and they make these helmets, they're weapons. The helmets they wear now are freaking weapons. You put that on your head and you think you're indestructible and now you're leading with your head, you know, and you're not tackling, you know, you're not, you're not hitting a guy in the numbers, you know, with your shoulder and wrapping up and driving him to the ground. You're, boom, you're coming in like a guided missile and headshotting the guy. And that ain't, that ain't tackling. Uh, so I'm like, where's the tackling? Uh, where's the blocking? Uh, where's the, where's the defense? The same thing in basketball, man. There's no defense. And nobody knows how to play defense, you know, because they made all these rule changes to favor the offense so that we get all these high scores and all these guys running up all kinds of stats, but there's nobody playing defense against them. So I, I just, no, I don't. I can't watch it. Um, Adrian, thank you for the question. Uh, Dung Products 99, how do you feel knowing that you're the best <laughs> YouTuber? Well, first of all, I don't know that at all. That is not true. Um, um, I, I thank you. Thank you. That That is a, 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 a big, big compliment, and it's not true. Um, um, 
but thank you. Um, uh, I think uh, I think Red Dead uh, Two is the best game, and I'm doing a series on it. And so, and the Red Dead community is fantastic. You guys are fantastic, and so any um, success is 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 not due to me. It's due to uh, playing the best game that you can play um, in this genre, and uh, the incredible uh, Red Dead uh, community. Um, so, okay, uh, luck suck. <laughs> luck suck. Why? Why? Luck suck. Why? 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 Um, okay. <laughs> Do you think Arthur would win in a duel against the best in the game? Oh, are you kidding? Easy. Arthur is the danger in this game. Arthur is the alpha in this game. Arthur is the, 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 like I said, he's the danger. He's the one you need to be afraid of. He's the one who can, uh, just deal with anybody, anything. Yeah, Arthur Arthur would tear the Arthur would single-handedly destroy the entire gang. Yes, uh luck suck. Uh Witty Woke asks, what do you think of the mu oh the music is is wonderful. It's just like everything else in this game, it's superb. Uh and it just shows the talent of the people who put this game together. Yes, Witty Woke. Lamex2 asks, uh, asks uh, L-A-M-X-X-2, do you believe you will be a voice actor <laughs> in Red Dead 3? <laughs> hey, I can dream. No, man, come on. They don't even, they, why would they do that? Uh, but you know what? If you're going to dream, dream big. So, yes, I'm going to be a voice actor in Red Dead Redemption 3. And you know what else? I'm going to be a character. They're going to make a Mojave D. Yeah. Yeah, dream big, man. i tell you what, uh, Lamex 2, um, if they call, I'm going to say where and when. <laughs> yeah, I'm there. I'm in. But now, nah, come on, man. That's a dream. But you got to have dreams. Uh, the second part of his question, how has your life changed for you and especially your family since the channel became known? Uh, um, communication, um, like I, I said previously, uh, one son lives in Florida, one son lives in Hawaii, a son lives in California, um, I and, and, and one of my other sons live in Nevada. Uh, so um, um, and it, the big change is we communicate daily. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, we communicate daily. Uh, you just, I uh, just read an interruption from uh, my son in Florida who just says, "Man, screen, screening your comment section is becoming a full-time job." You know, so I hear from them every day, and I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lamex Two Cobra Twenty Seven. Has playing video games helped you to connect more with your sons? We just answered that, uh, Cobra27. Uh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for the question. Need food, 2992. Do you like country music? Yeah, well, let's define country music first, okay? Um, a lot of what is supposed to be country music ain't, you know, uh, from my perspective, all right? Uh, um, you got to remember, I'm, you know, I'm from the fifties and the sixties and the seventies. So, um, eighties, nineties, two thousand. Um, yes, uh, would be the general answer. But again, you have to define what do you consider to be country music? Have you ever listened to Marty Robbins need food? <laughs> Every single song Marty Robbins has ever done. I have listened to Yes. Yes, I love Marty Robbins, and one of my favorite all-time songs is El Paso. Are you kidding me? Uh, yes, and you could make them. That song is, I think he wrote, he darn near wrote a perfect song, um, because you could make a movie out of um, uh, El Paso, that song El Paso by Marty Robbins. Y'all need to listen to that. Um, who is your favorite artist? Are we still talking country here, or... Um, my favorite artist is um, uh, Mireya Mathieu. 
a uh, French chanteuse, a uh, French singer, um, um, not well known in the United States, not well known anymore because she's my age. Um, but I fell in love with her when I was a teenager, man. Um, uh, and she didn't do many um, um, albums in English, but as far as um, anyone, you know, you can talk Frank Sinatra, you can talk anybody uh, who was uh, superb at presenting the song, at representing the song, whether it was a sad song, a happy song, a silly song, um, uh, and, but representing a song and presenting a song, uh, she is um, beyond compare. Um, there, she has no peers. Uh, well, Frank Sinatra, and you can put Frank Sinatra in there, and, and Ella Fitzgerald, and uh, people who are um, um, extremely talented and understand the song and present the song. They don't make it about themselves. They make when they're singing a song, it's about the song. Um, so Mireya Mathieu, um, in my and then her voice, impeccable, impeccable. Um, um, you know, uh, pitch perfect, and just a lovely, lovely voice, and and one of the most beautiful uh, women um, I've ever seen. Um, so she's my favorite, uh, and then you got you've got your Linda Ronstadt, and then you could go to Nat King Cole and um, uh, Johnny Mathis and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. And uh, yeah, I'm old, man. <laughs> a lot of these names you might not even know. I can't believe that. I mean. You know, uh, if somebody might not know who Nat King Cole was. Uh, anywho, thank you, Need Food. Um, the Institute 91 asks, what is one thing that has changed over your lifetime in society? Oh, the Institute is picking a fight. You trying to trap me here, the Institute 91? You setting a trap here? Uh, what is the one thing that has changed over your lifetime in society that you see as a problem? We could have an hour discussion about that, man. Um, and what is something today that is an improvement over how it used to be? Not a damn thing. And we could have a long discussion about that, too. You said, well, the Internet's a big improvement. Oh, how? How? What? It's make life easier. How is that better? How is making life easier better? I mean, we could have a whole discussion on that. Um, uh, so uh, what is something today that is an improvement over how it used to be? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, um, and, and like I say, we could, we, could, we could debate that. We could have a, a man, but that's not what this channel is about. Um, what is the one, the first part of uh, the Institute's uh, question is, um, Institute 291, what is one thing that has changed over your lifetime in society that you see as a problem? Big, big topic, man. Big, big topic. Um, what's your point of reference, the Institute 91? I mean, I go back to the 50s, the 60s. I come from a different, different world. Um, I come from different uh, background, different uh, uh, perspectives. People of those of the 50s, 60s, their background was different, completely different than uh, your background today, or from the 90s or from the 80s. Um, so, what what perspective are you coming from here? Um, what thing has changed over your lifetime in society that you see as a problem? I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll keep it real general so that we don't, I don't get myself into a trap here. Um, Self-respect. I'm going to just, just stay general. Um, for some reason, people... Don't respect themselves, which leads to a whole bunch of problems. Um, also, we, the people here in my country, the United States of America, have allowed ourselves to be ruled, which is not 
the way things were intended to be in this country. It was intended for we the people to elect servants, servants, government officials to serve we the people. And we have allowed that to be taken over by rulers. So just staying very general, not getting specific with you, Institute 91. There you go. Um, Neo boys, have you ever shot a gun? I already answered it. Yeah, thousands of times. I'm, I'm coming up from the bottom here now. Um, uh, let's go back up. To <laughs> I just saw a hilarious one. John VB 50R. John VB 50R. Hot tub stream when you hit 50,000 K. John, you want to see a 71 year old man in a hot tub? What's wrong with you, boy? <laughs> yeah, I can. I, I would have to, like, you know, work out and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, though? I have, I have a jacuzzi in the backyard. And it uh, has a million dollar view of the Las Vegas Strip. Now, who wants to see a 70 year old in a hot tub? You know, and 50,000 subs. Come on. That's that's probably not going to happen. Okay. J.J. Ham. I remember hearing that you were drafted into Vietnam. What was it like? I also said in that video, uh, J.J., thank you for the question, uh, J.J. Ham. Uh, that um, I didn't go, okay? Um, I was drafted. Uh, they had a draft lottery back then, and my number was 80, and I think they took all the boys uh, all the way up to uh, uh, whose draft uh, lottery number was 120 or 130. So everybody born on my birthday, their draft number was 80, so we were drafted um, and inducted. I passed the induction physical, but they were ending the war. Uh, we we were we were withdrawing. We were pulling out of Vietnam, and they never called me up. So um, uh, no need to for anybody. I said this uh, at the time on the video. Uh, no need for anybody to, to say thank you for your service because uh, a lot of my friends did go to Vietnam, and some of them did not. I have friends of mine now who were older than me, and so they were um, they were drafted and went uh, to war. Um, you know before I graduated high school, and some of them did not come back. Um, I, di I didn't go, John, J.J. Ham. So I can't tell you what Vietnam was like. Um, Lane Graham, 8337, which languages can you speak? I thought you were Mexican at first. <laughs> I speak Spanish and English, that's it. Um, a little bit of French. Um, but I used to be... Uh, really good uh, with Spanish, but I, I haven't used it in so long that I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as good as I used to be. Uh, one of my sons is married. His wife is from Peru. So of course she speaks fluent Spanish. Um, she's, uh, she, he married a Peruvian. Another one of my sons uh, married um, a lovely woman from Lithuania and um, I believe she speaks three, four languages. Uh, she's from Lithuania. So, um, but I only speak, my Spanish is, is, is dropped off a lot um, and, and English. Um, thank you, uh, Langram8337. Kevin Clinto asks, what was Y2K like? What was Y2K? Oh, um, the year 2000? What are you talking about? Were you not born yet? Were you, were you not around in the year 2000? Just so I'll, I'm talking to a, a very young person here. Um, what was Y2K like? Are you talking about um, like when everybody was freaking out uh, because all the computers were going to shut down? Is that what you're talking about? Which was a joke. I mean... Um, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, what was Y2K like? Um, um, 
I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry Kevin Clinto um I'm, I, I'll give that question a little more thought because I'm not sure what what you're what you're asking for there um, the potential of the computers uh, all going down worldwide uh, was a joke I don't think anybody took it seriously um, no, nobody worried about it um, I don't know I don't know what you're looking for there Kevin but thank you a CSA um, Bobinger B-A-V-A-G-N-E-R asks, what is your favorite car that you have owned? <laughs> a 1964 Rambler Classic um, um, a station wagon. Uh, it was town, a town and country. It was the top of the line Rambler station wagon, 1964, and it had push button transmission. So, I mean, so to get out of park and go into dry, you would push a button. You know, you would push a button, you know, first gear, second gear, reverse. Uh, it was a push button, uh, push button transmission. I just thought that was really, really cool. And it was a, a really cool body shape and um, a very versatile uh, vehicle. Um, I took it on fishing trips and, uh, and uh, hunting trips and because you could lay all the seats down in the back, so it would be like a pickup truck in the back. 1964 Rambler Classic. I think it was a town and country. It was whatever the top of the line wagon was. Uh, for Rambler then and I just liked it because it was very distinctive looking uh, it didn't look like anything else so <laughs> uh, okay I'm going to have to spell this one Petatirumator 3005 P-E-T-A T-I-R-R-U-M-A-T-O-R 3005 asks do you think it is a game running blunder by Rockstar Games to misname the Lemonade Riders. <laughs> Do you think I blunder on my part that I'm calling them the Lemonade Riders? Riders? Or do you think it's a blunder from Rockstar? They should have called them Lemonade Riders. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a blunder. Uh, if, if, if coming from my, from me, from my point of view, um, I could not pronounce uh, the word. It was Lemonade. Um, um, a French word, and I, I, I was, you know, I was playing in the in in the heat of the battle of the game, you know, and and I just I just called them lemonade. Um, if Rockstar um, or you uh, gets their nose bent out of shape because I called them the lemonade writers, I don't care. Okay, uh, Spitcon. It seems like you've worked many different jobs. How many? Which job did you enjoy the most? Oh, Lord. Yes, I have worked many, many jobs. I have been a welder. I have been a real estate agent. I have worked, I got my real estate appraiser's license. I have worked for a title company. Um, um, all of those were attempts to get out of the restaurant business because I would get burned out. I spent most of my uh, career, if you want to call it that, uh, most of my life in restaurants. I even owned my, I had my own one at one point. Uh, I was a franchisee. Um, so, I, but I, so I spent over 25 years in restaurant business. The first job I ever had was as a dishwasher. And, uh, I've done everything in a restaurant, every position uh, from fast food restaurants to, to five-star fine dining restaurants. But um, I would get burned out and I would look for ways to get out, you know. So uh, things like uh, thinking I was going to be a welder or re get into real estate. Um, oh, gosh, what were some? Oh, a limo driver. Um, I, drove, I was a chauffeur, drove limo in Las Vegas. Um, that was fun, actually. Um, boring most of the time, but when it wasn't boring, it was pretty fun. Um, uh, I've had lots of, you know, odd jobs and stuff, um, you know, to, just to make extra money. Um, there was a point there when um, uh, working in a restaurant, or being a restaurant manager and having four sons 
and wife um, wasn't generating enough money, so I would um, I took a job as a janitor for this um, uh, big building. Uh, so I would go and do that from like you know midnight until eight in the morning. You know, clean. It was a four-story building. Uh, did that for extra money as a janitor. I've worked in uh, supermarkets, uh, you know, and in, in the dairy section. Um, I've been a milk man. How about that? Um, home delivery milk. Uh, there were at that time there were only three dairies in the United States that did home delivery milk. milk. You know, the milkman comes to the door and puts a bottle and delivers your milk and cheese and dairy products. Uh, I worked for uh, Royal Crest Dairy in Colorado. Royal Crest Dairy was one of the three existing uh, um, home delivery dairies. Um, uh, Oh gosh, I could I could go on. I mean, I, I would have to think. There's there's other things. Which job did you enjoy the most? Um, I you know I always enjoy what I'm doing. I do. I always enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, you know. Um, I I don't think I could. Um, maybe. Um. um running um, the fine dining restaurants in Alaska um, in Denali State Park. Um, I was a GM of, of um, um, well, I did that for like five years. Um, and it's seasonal in Alaska because Denali National Park is closed uh, during the winter. So it's only open like from May to October or May through the end of September. Um, because it's, you know, it gets to be 30 below, 50 below, and uh, 20 feet of snow. And so they close the park down. Um, I think I really, really enjoyed um, working in Denali. Um, and, I, I, and I was the GM of the Alpenglow, which is a fine dining restaurant there. It was back then. I, I don't know what things are like now. Um, um, uh, the Nanana, the Nanana Bar and Grill. Uh, Nanana means, I think it means Muddy River, um, because the Nanana River uh, ran right by. Um, so, I, I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed working in Alaska. Uh, I'm going to take a break right now. I'll be right back at you. This old man's wearing down with all these questions. Okay, I'm back. Um, now, what was the last question? Uh, I seem to work a lot of different, yeah, lots of different jobs. Um, uh, the one above that, Anina, Anina one three four. Have you owned horses? Yes, two, uh, and a donkey, and a bunch of chickens. <laughs> um, how many? Two. Um, a sassafras, who we called Sassy, who was um, half Morgan and half quarter horse, and one of the best horses you could possibly uh, imagine. She was uh, fantastic, and Brandy who was uh, gelding Appaloosa. And he was a hard-headed horse. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Anina. Um, what has been the best and worst thing about being a father? There's nothing worse. There, there's nothing. There is no worst. There is no worst. How is there a worst to being a father? There is no worst. There's no, there's nothing bad. There's nothing bad about being a parent. Nothing, um, nothing, nothing. Um, have babies, um, you know, good grief. It's a blessing. Uh, there's nothing, there is no bad to being a parent. Um, the best, um, all of it. I mean, you know, uh, watching, um, uh, a, a baby watching your child uh, being born is uh, life altering uh, for the good. It's life changing. Just so right from the very beginning all the way through, um, it's all good. Um, it's not easy. Life ain't easy, man. Well, you, you don't want easy. There's trials and tribulations, and uh, we all make mistakes. I mean, we're all human. Uh, you know, the boys make mistakes. I make mistakes. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. 
uh, you know, you got to learn from them and, and, um, and, and, and improve. Um, I guess the best thing, I mean, okay, if you had to, if I had to really answer the question and get to, one, one of the best things is when one of your children marries someone who loves them. And I am blessed to have that happen uh, with my boys. So, as a parent, you love your child unconditionally. And through the ups and downs, through the trials and the tribulations. Um, so, when they marry someone who loves them, that is, wow. So that's one of the best things. Thank you. Uh, who, who asked that? Asigi Trigger. S i g g e t r y g g e r. Um, Bruno from Australia. Will you do anything special when you hit thirty thousand subscribers? Uh, probably have a heart attack and die. <laughs> I don't know, Bruno. Um, I haven't thought about that. I, I can't. I can't wrap my head around that. Um, user LJ9ZQ4D5DR5T asks, "Can you say how realistic the shootouts are in Red Dead Redemption?" Uh, no, I have never been in a shootout. I've been shot at. <laughs> uh, about no, I, I, uh, how realistic they are. Um, no, I can't talk to that. I can't speak to that. Um, uh, who who among us has been in a shootout? You know, unless you've been to war, um, which I have not been. Um, but thank you for the question, uh, user LJ9ZQ4DR5T. Um, now, Bill Tarantino, which would win in a fight? Let me get my big head out of here. <laughs> <laughs> or smoke them if you got smoke them if you got them would blow get my big head out of here oh wait here uh, let me get my big head out of here <laughs> oh god oh, great question now Bill Tarantino I like your sense of humor Bubba all right uh, the end of the world nine nine two one asks do you have any interesting hunting stories I uh, I, I told Juan about the moose um, when Johnny, uh, um, you know, we taken out a, a brand new guy um, and um, uh, getting his first moose. And um, I told that story. Uh, interesting. I don't think interesting uh, because hunting is um, now I, I've never done the kind of hunting where you get in a stand uh, or a blind um, I, and I sit and wait, you know, and put the bait down and draw the animal in. And I've never done any of that. I, I hike. I, 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 I hike. I'm, I'm on foot. I'm, I'm, I'm moving through the countryside and enjoying all of that. Just enjoying being out in nature. Um, um, I mean, there's hunting stories, but I don't, I don't think they're necessarily interesting. <laughs> Get my big head back in there. How about that? Um, Dennis Durant asks, what are your favorite missions so far? The one that jumps out is uh, Belle, uh, the Black Widow. Ah, man, that was a lot of fun. There was another one, and I, I'd have to look at the video. There was another one, one, and I said, this might be my favorite mission. Um, I can't remember what it is. I'd have to look. And I think when that happened, I said, you know, this is right up there with Belle. Um, 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 um. I, I think that's it, Dennis, Dennis Duran. Um, oh, Dennis Duran has another question. Uh, how do you feel about the notion that video games are a waste of time or just for kids? How do you feel games have affected or helped your mind at your age? Well, it definitely helps stave off Alzheimer's. <laughs> now, I... I'm very blessed uh, with uh, with excellent health my whole life, um, and so I don't have Alzheimer's or I don't have any diseases. I don't have arthritis, and I should, with all the times I've broken my body, 
<laughs> you know, uh, getting kicked by horses and bit by horses and falling off of horses and uh, and uh, uh, crashing on the motorcycles and uh, all that kind of, you know, and playing football and you'd think I'd have arthritis, but I do not. Um, so, but I, th I think uh, uh, older people playing video games, I definitely think it's a benefit um, uh, mentally. Um, you know, it gets those synapses uh, snapping and sparking in your brain, you know, get get all that, get that, you know, wake wake up parts of your brain that have fallen asleep. I, I think that's very beneficial. I really do. Um, it also helps with your um, your dexterity, uh, your 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 brain trying to uh, communicate to what finger <laughs> which I struggle with man with you know, I can't I can't get this finger this finger right here I can't get my left finger to, to let go of the LT when I'm trying to aim you know and that's a brain brain communication thing so I, I think it helps um, no I don't think it's a waste of time it can be a waste of time I'll tell you this when I, I had a wife and, and, and the four boys at home, I came home from work. I did not play video games. The boys did, and I'd watch them, and I'd get a kick out of it. But I had a wife, you know, and uh, kissing is better than um, playing video games. Uh, <laughs> well, just um, um, having time with your wife, uh, communication with your wife, and, um, um, uh, you know, whether it's just sitting sitting down uh, across from each other at a table and talking. Um, communication. Um, so it can be a waste of time. Uh, if you if you do it wrong now, if, you know, if your wife enjoys um, or your significant other, um, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, whatever, um, plays also, then, you know, you come home from work and it's a way for both of you to unwind. Yeah, I could see, I mean, if I had this available when I was um, out there in a the rat race, um, you know, um, working myself to death, uh, trying to... Um, provide um i could see this as a great way to unwind uh, after work I'm, i've said it in some of the videos uh i wish i could have uh, had this game uh, i would have come home and i would have just saddled up you know and gone for a virtual horseback ride you know i wouldn't have gotten into any uh, confrontations or you know or, or intense situations i would just find a place i would just ride and like get up on a on a high ridge somewhere a mountaintop and just look out over the valley and i could just and i would just leave him there and i would just sit in my chair and you know um get get work out of my brain you know um yeah dennis duran i hope that answers your question uh Rempress asks where were you oh when you found out about 9 11 man i had just gotten up and I went in the living room and I turned on the TV and the first tower had already been uh, struck. And I, th I didn't know what I was looking at. I, I could, and, you know, and the tone, the emotion in the, um, uh, the broadcaster's voice and just the, uh, the scene um, was horrific. And, and I'm watching this and as I'm watching, the second plane came in and hit the second tower and I was in shock it was uh, I, I, uh, it was uh, surreal in, in the most negative way um, and I immediately texted and called everybody I knew um, you know turn your TV on turn your TV on turn on your TV oh shit man I need to pray <laughs> sorry man Just give me a sec that's it. I'm done. Um, thank you all so much. Um, um, y'all are y'all are a, a huge blessing to this old man, and I do appreciate you. I do. I I can't I can't put it into words. Uh, but I'm done. Uh, I need to be alone now. I want to say one more thing before I leave about being a parent. Um, <clears throat> uh, it keeps you prayed up. <laughs> It keeps you prayed up, man. Yeah, I pray for my uh, my children or my family uh, members uh, a lot. And so um, that's it, though. I, I can't do anymore. I uh, thank you all so much. Um, and um, take care of yourselves and respect yourselves. Uh, we'll see you on down the road. Okay, a couple more. I don't want to end like that. <clears throat> um, 
<laughs> couple more. Um, I think we've got almost all of them. Um, Central Gaming 131 asks, what's the story behind the painting you have hanging on the wall behind you? That, that one. Um, it, it was uh, um, purchased uh, with the house, uh, the previous owner. Um, it's raining outside. Um, um, it's, it's raining outside here. Um, so the, uh, it, uh, I saw that painting and I said that that goes in the deal. <laughs> you know, you know that go, that stays. Uh, you know, with with the purchase of the house, um, it is. Uh, it would be like my dream house. I I, I really like. I'm, I'm looking at the painting over here. Um, I really like uh, that that style of architecture. That Spanish. Uh, um, Mexican Casa Grande um, um, architectural style. So that would be like a, a dream house. Um, I have a little bit of that here. Um, I do these videos from the Casita, which is a, um, a small house, a small building. It's not, it's really like a master bedroom is, is what it is, but it's separate from the house. And then there's a courtyard and that's the style of architecture and then the main house. And that's the style of architecture that I really like where uh, the Spanish, and I think the, the French did this too. Uh, you see it in Louisiana. Um, they um, have a courtyard in the middle, right, with a fountain, a garden or whatever. Uh, and then the house has two wings that come down the side like this that would have like the bedrooms and whatnot in it and then across the back. I, I can't, it, the camera does things backwards. Across the back would be the main house, uh, and, and so it's like a like a square, a three sided square, uh, uh, um, uh, with a courtyard in the middle. Um, uh, that's my favorite architecture. So that's the story behind that. It was um, um, requested by me to be included in the purchase of the house. Um, what is your prior experience with gaming? Have you played uh, story-based games like RD2, uh, RDR2 before? No, I never have played a game like this before. Or is it, it's a brand new experience. That's the next part of the question. Is it a, a new type of experience? Does the story succeed and keep... Oh my gosh, it keeps me interested. Are you kidding me? Absolutely keeps me interested. Um, my prior experience goes back to in television. I think I, I accidentally said Atari, but, but before Atari, it, it was in television that we played. Uh, my my brother-in-law and I, CC, uh, played um, um, NFL football on with the stick figures. <laughs> so from in television, I've owned every console uh, from in television through Atari uh, that has been made um, all the way through. Um, so I think you in television. I think you're going back to '82, '83. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, uh, you know, I had a, a PlayStation, all the PlayStation ones, um, the first PlayStations. Um, somehow transitioned into Xbox. I think PlayStation came before Xbox. I don't remember, but um, and I just played sports games uh, primarily um, up until. Um, Uh, XCOM, uh, which is, is my favorite game, one of my favorite games. It is my favorite game in that genre, turn-based strategy style uh, game. Uh, you can't beat XCOM. Uh, it's it's uh, the perfect video game for someone like me who likes turn-based strategy games. Okay, um, have you ever played uh, Grand Theft Auto V? I have never even heard of it, uh, no. Uh, if not, would you consider playing it? I don't know. Um, and that was from Azarius. Thank you, Azarius. Uh, oh, the previous uh, person, uh, at, the previous question was asked by Lemmer, L-E-M-M-E-R 2005. Thank you, Lemmer. And Central Gaming was a question before that. Um, uh, John Oreo 3861, do you know anyone in real life who acts like a character? Oh, yeah, I do. I mentioned him, as a matter of fact. Uh, Al, uh, uh, Big Al Comer. Um, 
uh, who's uh, I've known since high school. I hope Al's, Al, I hope he's still alive. I, I have not heard from Al in a few years. Um, uh, absolutely. Al Comer is, it's spelled C-O-M-E-R, is Arthur. All the way. Um, his nickname, and, and, and we called him this in real life, is Alley Cat. And um, Alan Comer is Arthur. Big Al, I love you, man. Uh, uh, Alley Cat, if you ever watch this, uh, give me a call. Um, yep. Yep. Oh, and another one. Bear. <laughs> I can't remember Bear's real name. Uh, bear was what everybody called him because he was a bear. Uh, full beard. Uh, welder. Um, um, and uh, Bear. Bear was very much like Arthur. Yes, it's thank you, John Oreo. Um, John Oreo also asks, John, you're asking a lot of good questions. Can you make a video doing a Red Dead style hunt in the Hunter Call of the Wild? What a great idea, John. Um, John Oreo, you know what? I think so. Because we have a revolver in there. And, um, yeah, and you can fan it. Boom, 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 boom. Um, yeah, they've got some. Yeah, and there's flintlocks. And yeah, they've got uh, black powder rifles. Um, I think that could be done, John. I think that could be done. Um, I'm gonna try it. Great, great suggestion. Uh, Hunter Call of the Wild. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, my favorite game uh, before this. Uh, along with XCOM, uh, XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, all the XCOM series, uh, and uh, Mutant Year Zero, again, turn-based uh, uh, strategy game. Yeah, great suggestion. Uh, John asked another one. Uh, we got three here from John. Uh, I think he had another one, too. Um, if you could play as another gang member, who would it be? Charles. Uh, uh, Charles. Uh, thank you, John. Um uh, safety Zoom 7754 Vince Gabriel Parungao Parungo uh, P A R U N G A O uh, um, 116. Uh, sorry if uh, for mispronouncing your name, um, um, uh, Gabriel, uh, Vince Gabriel. Um, uh, Dennis Duran asks Are you interested in playing Red Dead Online? No, um, I don't play well with others. Um, um, simply, I mean, you watch, if you watch these videos, you see how my brain gets all discombobulated, uh, just with, with playing solo with what's going on. If I'm playing with, uh, other people, that's just more distractions. It's like, Hey, where are you? What are you doing? I, 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 you know, I can't do it. I can't play online, man. Um, uh, thank you. That was asked by, um, safety zoom, Vince Gabriel, Dennis Duran, um, Leo Chavez, Oliver, Kovarik, uh, K-O-V-A-R-I-K, um, ask, what made you start playing uh, Red Dead um, Redemption 2? Um, my son bought it for me for Christmas. And when one of your children buys you something for Christmas, you use it. <laughs> and he's the one that had the idea. He said, Dad, it'd be great. It's it's perfect for you. And I said, well, I, I, what do you mean? I, I like strategy games. I like turn-based. This is, you know, what you're describing to me is is not the kind of thing I do. I've never done it. Uh, no, I, I, I've never done it. And he, But he bought it for me. And he says, no, no, no. He says, I think a, a series with uh, uh, old man uh, uh, playing a game he's never played before and a style of game that he's never played before and uh, and just with your your background, you know, how you grew up. And stuff. He, I, he said, I think, I think people would watch. So um, that's my oldest son uh, bought it for me for Christmas. Um, uh, Leo, uh, 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 Chavez, Chavez, and Oliver Kovarik, and um, user PF7MK1, uh, DW7J asks, how do you feel about the open world of RDR2? Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, anything in particular you would like to see in the open world that you haven't yet? Um, I, I can't even imagine. Um, everything I've seen is mind-blowingly good. 
Uh, thank you, user, um, PF7. Um, uh, Coda, High Fly, uh, Moat Plocks. Also, so that's Coda, 4839, High Fly, and Moat Plocks. Ask, what got you into making uh, uh, um, making gameplay videos? Uh, Hunter Call of the Wild. Um, I, I didn't have a PC. I didn't have any, a microphone. Didn't have a camera. I didn't have anything for making videos. But I would watch. I would watch um, all the big time YouTubers uh, for uh, Hunter Call of the Wild because I absolutely love that game. And um, uh, and I would read the comments. And in the comments, there were all these people saying, "How did you do that? I can't do that." You know, you're so awesome, blah, blah, you know, and they're, they're blowing up the, you know, they're blowing smoke up the dress of all these big time YouTubers. Um, and the big time YouTubers were just uh, experts. And, and I, but I would see so many comments of people saying, I can't do that. How, how can you do that? How are you so good? And I decided, I said, well, I, it's, you know, I didn't answer anybody. Of course, it wasn't my, it wasn't my channel, but I would read the com these kinds of comments. And I said, well, um, it's because you're comparing yourself at, at level 20 or below to a level 60 player who has tons and tons of experience, you know, you know, and they're and they're very skilled at, at the game. They're experts and they they make really slick videos, um, you know, and editing and all of that kind of stuff. I don't know how to edit. That's why I just go straight through. Um, and, and what I do is, you see what I do. I mean, it's, it's you know, I don't, I, can, I don't edit. I don't know how. I don't, I don't know how to make uh, cool, cool editing clips. Um, but I, I said, well, man, I can show these people how to do that, you know. Um, and so I uh, bought a PC, <laughs> bought a microphone, bought a camera, bought all the stuff for making a video. And uh, my brother set it up for me because I don't know how to set that stuff up. And... Um, um, started making the first series, which was the best route to level 60, because I, because I, I wanted to impress upon, uh, new people to the game, uh, uh, don't compare yourself to the, to a big time YouTuber who's a level 60, who's been playing for years and, um, is an expert at the game and, and get frustrated and stop playing. You, you, these people were stop playing because they, they would get frustrated, uh, with the game. And so I made a video a uh, series, the best route to level 60, not necessarily the fastest route, uh, but the best, the best way to do that. And if you followed the series and my goal was follow me along on this, I'm going to show you. And by the end of it, um, you'll be a level 60 in you know, you know, about 48, uh, real life hours, you know, or, or gameplay hours, you know, you can do this, you can do this in, you know, less than 50 hours uh, of, of gameplay time. And when it's done, your maps will be um, developed properly, and uh, you'll be set. You'll have the foundation laid and set, and now you can uh, play like the big-time YouTubers do uh, at level 60. And so that's what got me started was Hunter Call of the Wild. And thank you. That was asked by Roscoe, 1985, H-I-B-S, and Matty007. And Ricta. Oh, no, no, no. That's the wrong. No, they were the ones who say, what was the first game you remember playing? And that would be uh, in television, um, NFL football, or Pong before that. Um, I did answer that already. Um, what got you into making the video games? So it was a question I just answered. That was from Coda, High Flight, and Moat Plox. Um, uh, Deton... Deton IUSX, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Deton, sorry, uh, 7916, who is your least favorite character? Ah, ah, I'm, you know, you know, it's easy to hate uh, Micah, it's easy to hate Dutch, but man, they're so well written and so well portrayed uh, they're not, they're, and they're great characters. They're great characters. Uh, so yeah, you hate them, but um, I don't think there is one. Uh, I think all of the characters that we've encountered, uh, I, I can't say that, well, I don't, this is my least favorite. Well, maybe the guy we just killed um, in the last episode. The, uh, um, I can't remember his name, Colston. 
uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Colson. Yeah, he's a that was a he's a crappy crappy character. Um, but but well done. I mean, he's supposed to be. You're not supposed to like him. So I mean, there's lots of characters you're not supposed to like, but that doesn't mean that. Um, I don't have a, a least favorite one. Uh, how do you feel? This is from Kwonsky. Uh Thank you for that question, though. Um, who did uh, 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 Ditan, Ditanis, Dit, I can't say your name. Pronounce your name. Uh, what was this? Um, from Coda. How would you rather fan? Would you rather fans not say hey if they happen to see you in real life? No, man. See me in real life, you damn well better say hey. Come on now. Come on. Say hey. I'll say hey back. Thank you, Coda. Uh, Kwanzi, um, one, Polak, P-O-L-A-K. How are you feeling about this community? Oh, I love them. Uh, of almost 30,000 people you have created. I didn't create this, man. You guys already existed with the Red Dead community. Uh, you just all invited me in, and, and uh, it's very, very heartwarming and very humbling. Uh, thank you uh, all very, very much for that, and uh, thank you, Kwanzi. For the question, uh, Johnny uh, Dash M eight nine four four, do you play any instruments? I already answered that. Uh, no, I want. I tried. I just don't. I'm not talented in that way. Um, I believe. What is what? Uh, uh, Jen Rambo. J-I-N Rambo asks, what's your favorite Western cowboy gun? Uh, I answered that. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the trusty Colt 45. Um, not in the game, obviously. There's better pistols, but I like a Colt 45. Um, what is your favorite Western movie? Uh, Lonesome Dove. Um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, Unforgiven. Um... Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, oh my gosh, there's uh, the Searchers, uh, old movie John Wayne. Uh, there is a great, great movie with uh, Henry Fonda. It's an Italian movie, what they call the Spaghetti Westerns, with Henry Fonda playing a bad guy in that, and it has uh, Charles Bronson in it. I can't think of the Once Upon a Time in the West. I think it's called. It has um, Claudia Cardinale in it and Bridget Bardot, two of the most beautiful women in the world at that time. Um, um, I think it's called Once Upon a Time in the West. I can't remember. Uh, Hank Fonda, Charles Bronson, Bridget Bardot, uh, Claudia Cardinale. Um, anyway, um, those are great. Uh, I can, there's more. I, I like almost any Western. Um uh, IP freely. Why? Again, you know, IP freely. Okay, IP freely. <laughs> With the influx of subscribers, do you have any big plans for the future of your channel? No. Um, this has happened so fast and um, so unexpectedly. Um, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, plans for the channel um i know I, I don't i'm blank <laughs> thanks for the question ip freely um i think that's it. i think we got them all i think that's it i think that is all of them i'm looking through to see if i missed one that's it i that's it. I've gotten them all. Thank you very much. And once again, I'll say uh, take care and respect yourself. And uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll, we'll check in on Arthur later on tonight. Thank you all very much.